Okay, hi, I'm Jennifer Ferguson with Artistic Painting Studio and I'm excited to be here once again on Home Talk Live. Um, I'm here in Huntington Beach and I'd love for you guys to share where you're tuning in from as you log on. Um, today we're going to have a fun project working on fabric and doing some fabric painting and I'd like to also introduce who I have with me here today. Um, I'm very, very blessed and uh, thankful to have my daughter Ashley behind the camera. She happens to be in town. And once again, I still have my son Tyler who is going to help us out on the computer and help answer questions. As well as I think Karen will be online also with um, DIY Paint to answer some questions about the paint we have today. So we're going to get started. Um, the first thing that I'm going to be doing is when working with fabric, um, it can be a challenge if the fabric wants to stretch or pull. So what I like to do is use, um, it, this is a brand by Stencil Ease, um, and there are quite a few different brands, but it's just a um, spray adhesive and it's repositionable. So it's not a permanent spray adhesive. Make sure you get repositionable, otherwise it might just stick permanently. But it's giving you a sticky surface. So um, if you look at this can or any of the cans, they all say danger. Um, so go outside, um, someplace that's well ventilated, and um, spray the surface. Um, and approximately, I think it's maybe eight to 10 inches away from the surface, just spray it. Um, let it tack up for a few minutes before you bring it back in and use it. And that way it won't um, transfer any kind of a sticky residue either. Uh, so I always use some kind of just smooth cardboard to do this on. And um, I'm starting with just some fabric. Um, we're gonna be doing some pillows, and these are actually gonna be sewn into pillows later. But what I like to do is just open up the fabric, and if it is an actual pillow, um, you wanna just cut the cardboard down into the size that'll actually slide into the pillow form, um, which I'll show you in the end. Um, I actually did find some pillows, which were a little challenging to find. And um, those, um, I just cut the, uh, cut the cardboard to actually fit into them. So I just laid out the fabric and I'm only gonna worry about doing one side of it right now and um, just smooth it down. So that way it's kind of holding it so as you uh, work on this surface or you're brushing or anything, it's not gonna stretch and pull. Um, and what I'm just working with is just um, a cotton fabric is what I found. So I'm going to stripe this, um, and the way that I have done this technique, I keep picking up the wrong tape here, um, I'm going to show you guys a real, real simple way to um, actually create stripes. And I almost forgot, we have a Home Talk giveaway today, and the question is, what would you paint on your pillows? So if you want to enter the giveaway, let us know what you would paint. So I'm just going to start out, and I'm just doing an eyeballing technique. I'm not trying to measure or get real particular, and I'm just going to start from either end using my one-inch tape. And I think I've just been taping for so many years, I'm pretty good at eyeballing things, but if you're looking for perfection, then definitely um, measure you might even use like a watercolor pencil where you can make some lines. And then for spacing, I don't want to use a whole bunch of tape, but I'm just going to tear the one inch tape and make a couple of little pieces here where this is going to be my spacing for the next piece of tape. And I'm going to make a wider stripe that I'm not painting. So I'm using, I believe this is one and a half inch wide, and the first piece was just one. So I'm just measuring from where I've actually put the little spacers. And I'm trying to make sure I have this, at least the fabric laid out straight here. But this is a real easy um, and fast way to actually do stripes and do some spacing without having to do a lot of measuring and a lot of pre-work, and then I keep just um, spacing in. So as I'm playing with all my tape here, um, Tyler, who do, where's everybody uh, tuning in from today? Uh, let's see, Kentucky, oh, we have... East Texas, Italy, Ooh. Vancouver, Canada, Charlotte, North Carolina, Boston, so she's happy. <laughs> 
We have a lot of those. Alabama. Roll Tide. Sounds like we have people coming in from a lot of different places and countries. That's always so exciting. Can this be done on any type of fabric? Um, it really can. Um, I would suggest that I would buy um, some extra yardage just to play on. And even when I was working on this project, um, I did buy um, some extra fabric just so I could play, so I could test out all my techniques. Um, wanted to see how the paints actually react, reacted to it. So, um, yeah, it can work. You just want to kind of uh, Ooh, make sure that you are definitely uh, get some extra fabric and just play around. So, as you can see with my measuring, I got to the middle and I didn't have enough to actually make another full stripe. So, I went ahead and just changed the pattern slightly. No big deal. Now, if I was worried about keeping my pattern consistent, then I probably would have to do a lot more taping and measuring, and that just takes all the fun out of the project, okay? <laughs> so everything's taped down, and now we'll remove my little spacers. And then also, you just want to rub your hands across the edge of the tape, basically referred to as burnishing. Um, we want to try to make sure none of the paint actually seeps out underneath. So I'm just trying to smooth that down. And hopefully, I may do a well enough job at it, nothing does go underneath. So now we're gonna do some painting, and I'm working with um, Debbie's Design Diary DIY Paints, and this color is called Cake Batter. Um, sounds pretty yummy, guys. Um, it's just a really pretty buttercream yellow. And I'm going to pour some of this out onto like a foam plate. And I'm going to add water to this to create more of a wash so that it just soaks into the fabric. Did you wash it before painting? And then describe what you're making. Um, I'm actually creating some pillows. And um, the ones that I'm working with now will actually sew those together later. And you could actually start on some uh, preform pillow blanks. They're just a little bit harder to find these days. Um, what I'm doing here is uh, watering down the paint, um, but also Tyler asked, did I pre-wash the fabric? No, I have to admit I did not pre-wash my fabric, okay? Um, I will be heat setting it when I'm done in a dryer, um, but I did not pre-wash it. So probably best to go ahead and pre-wash just to make sure if there's any sizing uh, in your fabric that you have gotten that out of there. But I'm admitting, I'm being honest, I didn't, okay guys? <laughs> I just started playing. So how much you water it down, it really does not matter. It kind of just depends on how much pigment you want to see. The more you water it down, the less, um, it'll just be more transparent. You wouldn't have as strong as a pigment. And Ashley, can you pull on your tight so that you can really show everybody what I'm doing? So I'm using what's called a filbert brush which has more of a stiff bristle to it, but they're nice so that you can work the paint into the surface. And as you can see, it's pretty much just soaking in. And that's part of it being watered down. So the, it, the paint works really good. And like I said, you could go straight out of the jar. I just fill it with a little bit of water. It's gonna stay softer and also, um, work into the fabric a little bit better. So as I'm doing this, Tyler, are there any other questions so far? And I'm just adding a little bit more water. And you could like mix up a whole batch and be more consistent than I am, but I don't kind of mind if the colors fade in and out a little bit and some areas are maybe a little bit stronger and some areas are a little bit more faded. So I'm okay with doing it this way, but again, even like with my measuring on the stripes, um, if you're wanting to make sure that everything is perfect, spaced, and more consistent, then um, you're better off pre-mixing a batch of paint and taking the time to do all your measuring. <laughs> but I'm kind of just mixing it as I go, and if I feel that it becomes too light, I can pick up more paint. If it's not working into the fabric as well, then I can add more water. So once I did this, um, it is going to make the fabric pretty wet. So you're probably going to have to wait um, 
a few hours or you could possibly even throw it into a dryer and dry it fast so that you could work to your actual next step. Um, I think I just allowed all the fabric to dry overnight before I started my next step. So what type of brush are you using? Um, it's a filbert brush. So the question was what kind of brush and it's a filbert. Um, but it's not just a filbert, it's a filbert brush that is more of a stiff bristle that you would find like on a stencil brush. So it's not a regular just filbert brush because those would still be too soft. Uh, I think they are on my website. Um, um, and then fabric using and then what paint are we using in this? Uh, the fabric paint that or the the fabric paint that I'm using, it's not really fabric paint, was that the question? No, what fabric are you using? Oh the fabric the paint. Okay, the fabric <laughs> The fabric is just cotton, um, but you probably could use just about anything. You just want to test it and make sure that the paint is working well with it. And um, the paint that I'm using, again, is uh, the Debbie's Design Diary DIY paints. And is Karen online? Uh, no, I don't see so. Okay, um, not sure if Karen was able to make it today. I think she replied to me, and I walked away from the computer and didn't get to see her answer. Um, but the DIY paint by Debbie's Design Diary, um, I carry here at the studio and down in another location in San Clemente, but you can definitely get online and they have find a retailer near you so you can see if you can find um, somebody close to you to pick it up. Um, there's lots of retailers all over the United States. So I'm done with this part and then it's just a matter of removing all the tape. And if you burnish those edges really nice, if Ashley will come get a nice close-up again, you can see with just all I did was rub the edges, smooth down the edges of the tape, and um, there really isn't any bleed through at all. So we've got some nice perfect stripes. Um, great technique for spacing on fabric as well as even any time I'm doing projects on walls. I like my little cheating technique of just using um, the tape to actually do the spacing for me. Okay, so this is gonna need to completely dry. And I'm gonna go put it over here on a rack so that that can dry. And then I'm going to move over to my next pillow form here. and show you another technique. So with the stripes, I didn't add um, too much water to them. Um, pretty much just had a little bit of water being added. And this time I'm actually going to, um, again, I'm using uh, Debbie's Design Diary DY paints. And this is, I think, Carnival Red. And I am going to be creating a wash with this. So I'm definitely going to be using more paint. And somewhere in my pile here, I think I have some chip brushes. Here we go. So I'm using a chip brush this time to apply this. And people will crack up at me because, you know, these are some vintage um, chip brushes. They've been in my life for a long time. You can see they're rusted, they're short, um, they're stiff. And you know, it takes you a while to actually get to this, but sometimes you need a brush that's stiffer to actually work with. So I'm just mixing the paint and the water together. And again, you could make an entire batch and have uh, the consistency the same, but with this technique, I want more of like a color wash that's faded in and out. So I'm not going to um, mix it ahead of time. I'm even going to dump into my water straight out of the bucket and kind of wash that so that it'll be more faded instead of... Idea? What was that? It's about the giveaway in a minute. Oh, okay, the giveaway. Tyler's reminding me about the giveaway. So if you want to enter the giveaway today, please let us know what you would paint on your pillows. So as I'm working the paint in with this technique, um, I'm going to have areas that are lighter, some areas that are darker, maybe some areas where the uh, natural canvas color is peeking through, and that's what I'm looking for. So I'm not looking for anything to be extremely consistent. I want that faded look. So depending on 
the style that you're going for. Um, you can go for my faded look or you can be more consistent. So the more paint that I pick up, the darker and more opaque it will be. And then I just kind of dipping in some water and moving it around. And this is really a fun look just to do. Um, you get more of a faded, old world, inconsistent. I always like things that are not perfect. That's why I love about doing things by hand, that they're not all cookie cutter and perfect. So this technique is really going to make the fabric wet. So this will take, again, like overnight or throwing it into the dryer and uh, speed drying it. But the dryer is not a bad technique or an idea. So if I even want some areas to be, you know, really dark, you can brush those in to be at first and then come back and blend them into everything else with some water. But um, heat setting in the dryer uh, is a great idea. I know that we used to use the iron a lot many years ago, but I think the, the dryer will heat set this well enough. Um, and I was talking with everybody at uh, Debbie's Design Diary, and they have done a lot, a lot of fabric painting. So if you are looking for more techniques on um, doing some fabric painting with this paint, you might hit their website for even a few more ideas. Um, sometime either later today or tomorrow, uh, all the details of this project will be on Home Talk. Um, so I'll have a blog post up for you guys with uh, all the details, all the products listed. Um, so if there's any questions about what I'm doing and how I did it, uh, there will be a nice written tutorial for you guys. So as you can see, not too much consistency. I kind of have that faded in and out. And uh, that's the look that I was going for. So again, you would want to do both sides of the pillow. I'm just going to show you guys one for today. And let me get this hung out and out of my way. So now we're going to go on to... Question. Okay, I've got a question. Do you use acrylic paint for this? Um, if you use acrylic paints, I would mix it with a fabric medium. Um, that will make it stay softer as well as um, adhere better into the fabric. And that's one thing about the DIY paint is there's no acrylic or latex in the paint. It's a clay and mineral based and chalk based paint. So um, it's acrylic and latex that actually makes the paint stiff when you're using it on fabric. Um, so you're going to find that this would stay um, softer and more pliable on working with fabric, but definitely you can use acrylics. I've done it in the past. And I know there's also a lot of fabric paints out on the market that you could you know, use and try. Uh, so what we're going to do next is work with um, some of my rollers. So I'm going to show you guys how to um, load the new roller and how to do some practicing with it. So somebody's asked about the spray adhesive, I believe. Huh? Yes. Okay, so this is something I don't spray indoors. This is a repositionable spray adhesive, and I sprayed a piece of cardboard so that the fabric will stick to it. Um, working on cotton, it's not too bad because it doesn't want to like stretch on you too much, but it does keep it in place while you're trying to um, paint on it, which is really nice. So just make a sticky cardboard surface and stick, you know, just lay your fabric out onto it. Um, so, okay, we're working and moving on to the rollers now. And I'm going to show you guys how to load one of these. So this is my new um, stamping style rollers. And you have a couple different parts. It comes with the handle. You get to choose your patterned roller, and there are six different roller patterns to actually choose from. And then you have the um, sponge applicator, and this is the part that we load with paint. So the whole philosophy is that you're loading the foam with paint, and so as you actually roll onto your surface, the paint continually feeds the, the design of the roller, the pattern. Uh, okay, this one is going to be red. Okay, i got to remember which roller I'm using here, okay? So again, I'm using the Carnival Red, and what I have here is a, um, this is like a serving tray from um, any food place, like if you went to um, uh, the 
there's like places, what is it called? There's a place that you can get and just get cooking materials and stuff for um, commercial use. Um, <laughs> but it's just a serving tray, okay? Um, it's flat, it's big. I don't like using the um, paint trays because the paint trays are ribbed and have all kinds of things going on them. It doesn't give you a really flat surface to load a foam roller. So the serving trays work really great. And then, so they stay clean. You don't have to wash all the time. Uh, good old press and seal works wonderful to line the surface. And that way everything will stay clean. You don't have to clean these as often. So I'm brushing out the Carnival Red on here. And I'm actually going to pour some more so that we can load this foam roller pretty good. Where do you get the rollers at? Um, the rollers are one of the products that I carry. Um, they're one of my newest type of roller, which is referred to the stamping style. Um, so you'll find them on my website, and I'm sure Tyler's putting some links on there for you. Um, but we've got tons and tons of different rollers. The stamping style roller um, that we're working with today there's only six different patterns that work with this particular style roller. But in the rest of my collections, um, I think there's probably close to 50 different rollers to choose from. So there's a lot of options. So once I have the paint on here, um, I did add some water. And it's nice just to water it down a little bit so that it soaks into the foam. And then basically just want to roll this through the paint and load it. And I found that it's not a bad idea to also just help brush it in. Makes it a little bit easier. That way you don't have to put out a ton of paint. Is there any way you turn your audio up? No. Um, no, I can't turn my audio up. Some people like not hearing Okay, I do have my mic on to guys today. I guess I'll just try talking a little louder, okay? I was hoping that my mic was gonna keep my voice a little stronger for you. Um, so you just wanna get the sponge loaded. And like I said, um, depending on how much area that you're planning on covering would determine probably how much of the paint that I'm loading on to begin with. We're just going to be doing a couple of samples and um, a pillow, so we don't need a ton. But you'll see that this is my favorite way to load them, okay? And it seems to work really well. And it's the least messy, okay? Okay, so once I have that part loaded, question. I have a question over here. Okay, Tyler. How often do you need to replace the roller? Um, to replace the foam? Um, I haven't worn one out yet, so I'm pretty good about when I'm done with them. I'm wrapping them up with press and seal um, if I need to save them for a couple hours. And if I'm done using them, I'm just rinsing them out. They rinse out really well. Um, I'm sure the red's going to stain, but other than that, they're fine. But I haven't worn any out, but we do carry just the replacement foams in case you do. Uh, so I want to show you guys how to load this. Um, the best way to do this is to lay it on the end because they have a little metal bar on the end. So you want to keep that metal bar against a flat surface. And with your fingers, I'm holding onto the bar on top and kind of pinching the black um, handle part as I load in the pattern, okay? Because you got to pull the handle apart to feed in the pattern one. So make sure that you're always using um, your opposite hand. I'm right handed, so I'm using my left hand to hold on to everything. And that way everything stays in. And then the first thing you want to do is just to get, I just got like a practice piece of paper here. I want to get that water out of my way so I don't dump that. And you can roll in any direction. You can roll towards you, or you can roll away from you. And as you do that, you don't have to press hard either. It's a very gentle touch, but it's loading the paint onto the pattern as you go. So you want to always have some place to test first and off, I don't want to say offload, but actually load the pattern, okay? And like I said, you don't have to press hard they are a very soft um, rubber for this style of roller. Okay, so let me move that out of the way. And here we have the pillow that I have already started, okay? And this one has my stripes on here. And okay, I want to determine which direction this pattern is rolling. 
So I'm going to do this one more time. Okay. So I don't want to get that on there. Okay. okay. I just want to see which direction the pattern is rolling so I can determine how I want it onto the fabric. Okay. So I want it to go that direction, so I'm going to move the fabric this way. And I want to try to line this up the best I can. So there's a seam right here to the actual pattern. So I'm going to make sure that seam is on top every time I start my roll. And I'm just going to start off the side a little bit here. And oops, okay, it's grabbing the fabric. There we go. Okay, should take that down. <laughs> and roll right to you. Okay, so I am going to do that. It's wanting to pick up the edge of the fabric and roll it in. How often do you have to fill the roller? Um, the biggest thing that I've done with them so far were drape panels, and those were probably around seven, eight feet tall, um, and I had to reload after about the third pass. So you can tell when the paint starts to um, fade a little bit, the color's not as strong, and then I would go ahead and um, reload it. So I'm going to line this up on the tape and do my next pass. Do one more here. Okay, that didn't hold. Okay, definitely tape your edges down. It wants to just roll those right up. Okay, best to watch me do it more than once. I'm gonna tape that down really, really good. <laughs> Okay, I'm just trying to line the pattern back up so I can hopefully match it. And there we go. So this will be the pattern that you're going to get on there. Very pretty. Kind of like a damask. This one is referred to as Serenity Damask. So again, you're going to want this to completely dry. So I'm going to put it someplace safe for a few minutes here. And then I'm going to show you how to do the last one here. So are there any other questions, Tyler? Do you ship to Canada? We sure do. We ship almost everywhere in the world. I was actually sharing with my daughter this morning that... Um, We've got a couple orders to the Netherlands and the UK. Um, so we kind of ship just about everywhere. Um, the paint that I'm using is uh, DIY paint by Debbie's Design Diary. And I've washed it down or watered it down to create um, the paint for the background. Um, so that you can create a wash with it and you can see that the fabric has remained extremely soft so you haven't changed the texture too much at all with um, using that paint on a complete wash like that. So another question Ty? Yes. Uh, do you seal the paint? Do you um, seal the paint? No, you don't want to seal it. The, be the best that you're going to be able to do um, to protect it is heat set it so I'm going to throw them in the dryer on a hot dryer for maybe about 15-20 minutes just to set it. Um, if you're worried about um, them fading or anything, you might want to go ahead and um, heat set with an iron too. Uh, that always seemed to be like the best way to heat set years ago. Is the paint not getting in the dryer? No, it's not. It's not going to come off. <laughs> it won't come off anywhere. I don't think we could remove this if we want it to, okay? It's, it's in the fabric. So I'm going to do one more. And this one, I've already loaded the sponge. So I just need to get that in there. And when I actually did the original one on this, I was doing a, the buttercream yellow with on top of the red. And I didn't think the contrast was strong enough, so I'm actually going to use um, crinoline and mix that in with the yellow uh, so that I get a softer color and I'll have more contrast. 
um, you'll see when I show you guys the finished pillows that um, the yellow is really, really light on it, which is pretty, but if you want to have a little bit stronger statement, um, I'm just changing the color a little bit here. Question. Question for you. Uh, a lot of people are asking, can you use this, like, these rollers for walls? Yes, you definitely can use them on your walls. Um, they are actually designed for, um, for actually using on walls, so you can just do about, just about anything with them. Um, I'm having fun on a lot of fabric with them. Um, I just finished last week a piece of furniture where I did um, the drawer fronts. Um, your walls you can do. I don't really think there's too many surfaces that cannot be done with them. So I'm actually loading the crinoline, which is just a soft cream color, right over the yellow. So if the yellow comes through, I'm not gonna worry about it. I think it'll be pretty because it'll be kind of two-toned. Okay, I'm gonna add a little water here water that down a little bit and then just load it into the roller and you guys will love this brush thing okay so make sure you have a chip brush handy and that you are using the chip brush to help brush the paint into the roller because I found that this is a really good, great way to do it and depending on um, the paint you're actually using because you can use any paint it doesn't have to be DIY paint that's just one of my favorites and it works really well with fabric um, but if you're using um, an acrylic paint you can use um, you could probably use house paint with this it wouldn't work yeah, wouldn't matter um, so whatever paint you're using depending on how thick the paint is will depend on how much water you want to add to it because you do want it to be thin enough that it's going to flow and load your pattern okay so again I'm just going to show you guys um, keep this I've got an extra little hair there Keep it where the bar is down onto the table or a hard surface, and that way you can open it up and get both of those in there together. It is a little tricky at first. I actually did a live video for a class that was working with them, and it's just a little tricky to get used to loading them. Again, I'm gonna get my... Can you describe what you're doing here? Um, what I'm doing here is just making some fun pillows uh, with a fabric painting technique. Uh, where we did the wash in the background and I'm using the rollers to create a pattern. So always have something. This is just some unprinted newsprint that we pack packages with, but it's a great way to get your roller loaded, okay, so that the pattern is loaded with paint. And you always want to do that first before you start your project. Um, if you look at my table here, you can see that we have rolled all over this table, okay, <laughs> several different patterns. So the one here is referred to as the chrysanthemum. And before I start on here, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I've got this edge taped down so that the roller doesn't want to wind up the fabric. Again, I'm gonna remind everybody um, about the giveaway and make sure that you guys enter. I believe Home Talk is gonna be giving away a really cool little tote. And the question for today is, what would you paint on your pillows? And you can definitely check out the website. I'm sure Tyler's got a couple of links on there for you and see all the different pattern choices we do have. So again, I'm just gonna start on one end and roll the design. I'm not worrying about lining it up. I'm just kind of spacing out. This is one of those patterns. I don't think it really matters where it lines up. And remember, you don't have to roll too hard. The rollers are really soft, um, so it loads them real well. So yeah, I do like the contrast on here a little bit stronger with just the, the crinoline instead of the buttercream. So again, this is one that when it's completely dry, all I'm going to have to do is sew the edges, and then I figured we might even do a fold over with some buttons, um, just something really cute and simple. Um, and if you do have a hard time finding um, pillows, and I did, I looked and looked, and I finally found, um, this is the one brand I did find. Um, this was at Hobby Lobby, okay? It was the only blank I could find anywhere. I looked online, I looked at other stores, but... Um, those were the blanks that I did find. Again, I'll have this information um, on the website for you. And Tyler, any other questions that I can answer? No, not any questions. Yeah, I mean... Okay, so 
I'm going to show you what the finished pillows actually look like. Ask for any last minute questions. What was that? Just ask them if they have any last minute questions. Yeah, does anybody actually have any last minute questions? And um, I can definitely make sure I answer those. If not, I'll definitely go through all the questions online later and make sure I've answered anything that I've missed as we've gone through this live. And here are the final pillows that I've created. Just fun, something where you can customize to any room or any project. Um, and I hope you guys have had fun with me. So thanks for joining, and we will see you guys soon. Bye.